Hey, Lima Wesleyan Church. Hope you guys are doing well today. I know this is a little bit different from what we've been doing here with our coronavirus time, uh, but we realized just with having to cancel service, um, we wanted to make sure that we offered kind of a little bit more of an extended teaching for you guys. And so today uh, we're doing the first of what we're going to be doing here on Thursday afternoons or slash evening, whatever time it'll be posted. Uh, but we're going to be doing just some devotions, uh, just again, just a few minutes out of your day. Hopefully just to kind of give you some challenging ideas, some challenging thoughts, maybe even to go over it with your family as well. Um, should be a great time. Uh, just as far as housekeeping, just wanted to remind you again, uh, we've got limonwesleyan.com slash resources. There's plenty of free, I mean, totally free resources that you can do just for your personal reading, uh, maybe even some studies to do with your family. Uh, really great stuff there. Uh, you can also be re-watching any previous uh, sermons or messages we've done in the past on our YouTube page on Lyman Wesleyan Church. Follow us on Instagram, it's just Lyman Wesleyan. And if you need any help at all or need any encouragement or just any resources, please, please don't feel afraid to reach out to us at office at LymanWesleyan.com. Okay? Uh, so kind of leading into what we're going to be talking about today. I want to give you a little bit of context. So we're, we've are we been doing this series where we've been talking about uh, Jesus and just his life and what it looked like for him to interact with people. And so the message and the, the passage we're looking at today is actually going to be coming from Mark 8, which is right after he's already come into Jerusalem. He's ready to just accept what's about to happen, right? He, he's coming to Jerusalem as this king. He's He knows that the path ahead of him is short, that his days are limited at this point. And so he is being very open and very honest about what it looks like to be a Christ follower, what it looks like to be his disciple. And so we read this passage here in Mark 8, verses 34 to 38. Let's read it together. Then Jesus, he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? See, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. So again, Christ was on his way into Jerusalem. He was on his way to being beaten, uh, betrayed, arrested, and eventually crucified. And so with that kind of came this desperate uh, just willingness and just open, open vulnerability with his disciples and all those that would listen to him about what it looked like to be a Christ follower. Literally, just the passage before this, we see that Jesus is teaching his disciples about what's going to happen. He's telling them how he's going to be arrested and, and eventually killed. And Peter, got to love Peter, he's this great disciple of Jesus that's so brash and just reactionary. And so being the strong and brave man that he is, he tells Jesus that that cannot, surely cannot happen. And he rebukes Jesus even. But in response to that, Jesus even gives him these very strong words, a stern reprimand. He says, get behind me, Satan. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. And so after this, again, we see Jesus is being very open, very blunt about who he is, about what, what he came to do. And so Jesus gather, gathers this whole crowd along with his disciples, and he teaches them to embrace humility, right? He says to take up your cross and follow him. See, to have a full life, Jesus explained, we have to be willing to give and empty ourselves for him. It would mean more than just letting go of all the things we've tempted or were tempted to hold on to, right? But it's actually willingly giving to others and offering ourselves. I remember reading once about a French soldier who fought in World War I. He was so seriously wounded that his arm would eventually have to be amputated. So he goes into the medical ward, the surgeon performs a surgery, and uh, he's so upset for this soldier that he is determined and he makes a point to be there personally when the soldier woke up. And so finally, you know, the soldier comes to, he starts opening his eyes, and the doctor immediately pipes and he says, Oh, sir, sir, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We, we had to take your arm. You've lost your arm. You could tell that the soldier was very sad for a moment, but then a slight smile appeared on his face. And puzzled, the doctor asked him, you know, well, what, what's going on? Why is this guy smiling? And the soldier, with a smile on his face, he says, I did not lose my arm, doctor. I gave it for France. See, many times in war, incredible, amazing sacrifices are made. 
Now, granted, we are not in a war right now, but we are in a war for our souls. We're in a war for our own survival, even at this point, for our hearts. Many of us and many of our world, many people in our world are defaulting and giving into fear and giving into desperation and anxiety. And all those things are justified. They are. But there's a different perspective that Jesus offers. Again, through this passage, he says, in such a crazy time in our world, the natural response, right, is to be stingy, to be fearful, to hoard all the toilet paper, to hoard all the beef that we can find, to just acquire things that we really don't need at this point in time. But generosity, right, is unnaturally. It goes against the grain and against our default reactions. See, the vast majority of our world is panicking and aimlessly trying to hold on to anything that they can grab a hold of, even though there are things that will not bring stability, even though there are things that will not bring any sort of fulfillment. See, our world is being driven by fear. But again, Jesus offers a completely different perspective than fear, right? He, he's offering a perspective that's based on faith being expressed through love and mercy and peace, Right? All three of those things are a natural extension of, of being humble and being willing to give of ourself. So if you believe in Jesus today, there is such an abundance of love, mercy, and peace that you can actually go on and share it with others, right? And so as we're trying to discover what a new normal looks like in our world today, especially in this coronavirus pandemic, I challenge us to think of creative ways to offer love and mercy and peace to others. Offer love by di differently by volunteering to do a chore that maybe you're not typically responsible for doing, right? Maybe write a note and leave it to, for someone so they will see it, right? Tell them that you love them. Maybe even allow them to choose the TV show you're going to watch tonight after you're all settled down for the day. Another option, again, to be offering mercy to people. Let's be real. We're all cooped up. We're all a little stir crazy. We're getting cabin fever, we're bound to get on someone's nerves and someone else is definitely bound to get on our nerves. Instead of being reactive, instead of doing the thing that is impulsive, right? And powering up and putting them in their place, just acknowledge that they hurt your feelings, that they, they got on your nerves. But then instead of withholding forgiveness, right? And being becoming bitter, forgive them, just forgive them, right? We all need mercy in this time. And so it's as simple as that, just forgive people. Offer peace, and this one's important. Offer peace when someone is scared or upset or angry or anxious, right? In this time in our world, dealing with this coronavirus, so many things are uncertain. It's such an unprecedented time. That's the thing I keep hearing over and over again. But peace, right? This peace that goes beyond understanding. Peace right now looks like us simply just listening to people. It looks like offering prayers for people. It looks like us sending a funny picture, a funny video, or just doing something to make someone smile, right? Peace right now looks like just remembering that this is not the end of our stories. As we talked about on Sunday, we know that all storms come to an end. We believe that's gonna be just as true for this coronavirus storm today. And so friends, our spouses, our brothers and sisters, our coworkers, our friends, our store clerks, even our fellow shoppers, they all need love, mercy and peace today. I know right now, even in my own life, those three things almost seem like they're alien, they're foreign, right? I need all three of those things. I know you do, I know people around you do. So let's just give that to people, let's offer that. Let's be humble and freely give those things to people in the midst of this crazy, crazy time in our world. And so again, we, we've posted this online. It's gonna be available to you uh, as a PDF and just here on Facebook. Uh, but if you would like to print this off or just read over it with your family, I think it'd be a great time to facilitate some different conversations around your table. Maybe just to have a little bit more of a, a spiritual connection within your family. Again, that'll be on limeandwesting.com slash resources. Uh, again, I would just encourage you to take the time to go over this together. Take the time to pray together. I mean, what a time. Uh, to be present with one another. Love you guys. We hope that you are staying healthy and you're staying safe. Please continue just to tune in and uh, engage with us here on Facebook. We love y'all. We're praying for you. Hope to see you next time. Take care.